Hello, I'm Graham, and I hope everyone's having a great day. And welcome to part 5C of this new video tutorial series aimed at new users to the Panasonic Lumix FZ8082 bridge camera. Now, in this particular video, we're going to look at stop motion animation and time lapse photography. Now, there's very little difference between the two, except in stop motion animation, you can actually stop and pause the uh, camera while you set up the next shot. Whereas in uh, time-lapse photography, you set the interval at which the camera will fire. Now you can actually do that in stop motion as well. You can actually use an automated sequence, but generally you'll be using the single shot, reposition your model and then carrying on. So let's have a look at the setup for stop motion or time-lapse animation. Now, it's not an area that I'm a specialist in. All I know is how to set up the camera. There's a couple of demonstration videos I've been posting in this sequence, so you can see what you can actually do. But it is a specialist field, especially stop-motion animation. Uh, some of these things can take months to put together in, in terms of planning and in terms of getting the shots right. But uh, in this particular video, we're only going to use a very simple animation so you can get the effect of how the camera operates. So first of all, let's have a look at stop motion animation. Now you'll find stop motion animation in the record setup menu and you'll find it on page four of seven. When you select stop motion animation by pressing menu set, you're brought up to the secondary menu which says, do you want to start this stop motion animation or do you want to use auto shooting? If you set auto shooting to on, it will then ask you what the shooting interval will be. And if you have a look at that, you can set the interval up to 99 seconds between each shot. But in this particular case, I'm going to use um, just manual sh uh, settings. Um, and that will allow me to uh, create a sequence where I can actually uh, move the, mo the model between each shot. Now, as with still photography, you'll set up the scene exactly as you want. So here I'm in the manual exposure mode, got a natural photo style, my aperture is f3.4, my shutter speed is a 40th, and my ISO is 80. So that is the scene, and I've got it in manual focus so we don't change position. And for all these stop motion and time lapse photographers, you don't need the camera to be moving at all, and ideally you don't want the subject to be moving. So the camera has got to be on some sort of sturdy tripod, and ideally you want your subject um, locked down so that it doesn't move. Uh, you might be using a tape or bolts or clamps to hold your model in position while you do the time lapse. I've also got my two second timer set up on here so I can actually uh, fire each shot without moving the camera in terms of image vibration. So to start the sequence, we're in the um, stop motion animation, press start, we want to make a new stop motion animation or you can add uh, additional footage to one you've already created. But I'm gonna create a new stop motion animation. So select new and now we're ready to start shooting. So we'll take the first shot and you notice we've got number one aligned there on the screen. So I take the first shot and now I will move the position of my subject um, so that I can create the uh, sense of movement. So in this one, it's just this simple zoom lens and I'm gonna move the zoom out by uh, about one degree rotation. And again, try not to disturb the position of the subject. Just move the lens out a little bit and then we come back and take shot number two. Carry on by extending the zoom a little bit more and then taking the next shot. Now again with the uh, particular video you need to work out how many frames you'll need for just one second of video. Remember at 25 frames per second you'll need 25 still pictures to just give one second of video. Now there's two ways of doing stop motion animation. One is the full frame animation where you use one picture per frame and another one is in using the half frame so you use two pictures for each frame. So that means you're not taking as many pictures but the motion is a little less um, smooth. Once you've completed the complete set of pictures, if you press menu set, go into stop motion animation, do you want to end the shooting? You'll say yes, and then you'll create the video. So when you create the video, it will ask you 
what recording quality you want, what frame rate you want, and whether you want the sequence to be normal or reversed. If you want the smoothest operation, you'll choose the highest frame rate you've got. Uh, so if you're in 50p, you'll get 50 frames per second. If you want to create a video with 25p uh, frame rate, then you'll see you get 25 frames per second. Once you've done that, you'll just press OK and it will create the video and it'll say how long it's going to need to create that video. In this case, we've only got two frames, so it's going to create that video in no, no time at all. If you wanted to preview the video, then you'll just, as per normal, just uh, click the uh, up arrow and you'll be able to play the video. So that was how we created the stop motion animation. And again, you're limited only by your own imagination. Now let's look at uh, time-lapse shot. And again, it's in the same setup menu, page four of seven. For a time-lapse shot, you get the opportunity to set a start time, but normally you'll be starting from now or you can set it in the future. The shooting interval will be the interval between each shot. So if I just wanted one second between each shot, and again, it will depend on the type of scene you're shooting, um, sort of one second for uh, vehicles and people moving or 10 seconds for clouds uh, for something like that. Uh, then you can set the image count. Um, here I'm just going to set uh, 10 images and then once you've set up the interval and the image count press set and when you're ready press the menu key while you're locating on the start and it'll say press shutter to start now the camera will take 10 pictures at one second interval or it will carry on until you uh, stop the video manually at the end of the sequence the video will stop and ask you do you want to create the video so just like the Stop motion animation, again it asks you for the record quality, the frame rate and the sequence normal or reverse. When you've done that press OK, it again tells you how long it's going to take to create that video and as before you can replay the video by pressing the up arrow key. So again you'll see the two seconds we did for that particular video. If for any reason you missed that opportunity to create the video at the end of the sequential file or your stop motion animation, don't worry, you can pick that up from the replay menu. So first of all, you want to find the clip you've got. Um, so you'll find uh, there we've got the three pictures for that last series. That's not the one I want. Uh, I created one uh, with 87 pictures. So that's the one that I want to create the video from. Once you've um, navigate it through to the file that you want. If you press the menu set and then cursor through to the replay menu and then cursor through until you find the stop motion animation. And there we are, it's on page three of five. So with the stop motion animation selected, um, you'll press set. And again, it'll ask you, do you want to create a 25 frame per second video, or you can go to 12 and a half or whichever, and the direction will be normal for this particular shot. When you've done that, you just click OK. And as before, it'll tell you how long it's gonna to take to create that video. And you'll see that you'll get the creating video icon come up on the screen while it actually creates that video for you. So normally for the smoothest operation, you'll be selecting the highest frame rate. But if you wanted to create one with a longer time, then obviously you select a slower uh, frame rate. Then it gives you the opportunity to play that video again by using the up arrow key. You'll be able to see we've got the video playing of that lens extending from an 87 shot sequence. And it's the same with your time lapse again. If you miss the opportunity to create your time lapse, uh, then you can actually create that from your image sequence. 
So there's how to create time lapse and stop motion animations. Again, if you want to find out more about this, just do a search on YouTube for stop motion animation and you'll find some fantastic videos there created by people with a lot more skills in this area than I possess. So it gives you some inspiration as to what you can achieve if you're prepared to put in the amount of time to create the models, animate them and then edit them in a edit program. So this is just doing simple edits in the camera to produce those uh, quick time lapse or stop motion animations. So until my next video, as usual, thanks very much for watching. If you're a new viewer, please do click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon, and you'll be warned then when I've uploaded any new videos to this series. Also check out my photographic blog and I'll put a link to that in the video description below where you'll find lots more information on old Panasonic bridge cameras and in particular the FZ82 or 80 as it's known in the UK. So until my next video, thanks for watching. Please do take care and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.